we attend, uh, we, we connected with a church down in Florida. It's a, what you would call a mega church, about 4,000 members. And they have phenomenal worship, as you can imagine. Phenomenal. And I love it there. We have sat there for eight months and we've been ministered to and we've grown and we've developed and we've matured. And I'm not that guy that says, you know, uh, I went to another church and bragging about the, the new church. There's no place like home. There's no place like Chestnut Assembly of God. There's no place like Chestnut Assembly of God. There's no place like the Spirit of God in this house. It's special. It's unique. It's unique in this house. And you want to know why? Not because of you. Not because of me. Because God has chosen this house. This house has a call. This house has a destiny. This house has a purpose. It's a light in the darkness. And we've not been able to see yet, but I'm telling you, the veils are coming off. The veils off our eyes, the scales off our eyes are coming off. And we're going to see, I agree with that word, brother. We are getting ready to see things that you have never seen before. If you're, if you're afraid of fastness and being in a fast car, get your seatbelt on, baby, because we're getting ready to move. We're getting ready to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And here, and here's what I, here's what I heard during worship. Here's what I heard during worship. Jesus whispered into my ear while I was right there and I heard it out loud. I heard, I have just told fear to shut up. <laughs> Let me just say that again, because some of you are still back with Jesus speaking in my ear. Jesus said in my ear during worship, I have just told fear to shut up. How many of you know that fear can paralyze us? How many of you know that fear can keep us from our destiny and our purpose? How many of you know that fear can keep a church from its destiny and its purpose? How many of you know that it will delay the promise if, if we're fearful? The only fear that we should have is a reverence and a fear for the presence of God. That's the only fear that we should have as children of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Let's stand together this morning, please, as I bring forth the, the word. Uh, just a couple things. Man, it is cold in New Jersey. <laughs> when we left Florida Wednesday morning, it was 89 degrees. In Palm Coast, I'm not shoveling any snow. It's beautiful. My little granddaughter runs around chasing after the little lizards. She loves it there and we love it there. We're, we're happy there, but we're more happy here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was kind of afraid when Andrea came up to give that prophetic word. And thank you for sharing that. Wow, how incredible that was. But when she started to talk about a big fat belly, I got scared. I wasn't sure where she was going with that. I got a little embarrassed for a minute there. But then thank God you clarified it. And it's good. It's good. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready for the word of God this morning? Because I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you today. Because God has something special for this house, for you. And here's what I believe. The Holy Spirit is going to tell you something you've never heard. Something that you need to hear. Something that's in your heart that you've been asking. Maybe a concern. Potentially a fear. If you have struggled with fear. And don't, listen. Let's not be ashamed to, to talk about what we struggle with. And it got so quiet. It got so quiet. Maybe this side. Let's not be afraid to uh, talk about what we struggle with. Is that okay? This side, is that all right? Thank you. See, this side has probably been saved longer than you guys over here. But if you struggle with fear, if you have struggled with fear to the point of paralyzing you, put your hand in your heart. Come on, put your hand in your heart right now. And say, I believe Jesus told fear to shut up. I believe that Jesus told fear to shut up. I rebuke you fear. Your lease is up. Be gone in the name of Jesus. And now God fill that space with faith, with love, with joy. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a mighty clap. Come on, get, put your hands together and give the Lord a mighty clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a mighty clap offering. For he is good. He is good. He is good. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. The last eight months for us, uh, we believe, those of you that were, that were in the meetings yesterday heard the story. Uh, we're not going to go through that again and a bunch of saying, thank God for that. But uh, uh, we have experienced the presence of God in the last eight months like never, ever before in our lives. We can look back and and where we started from to where we are today and the supernatural experiences that we have had, the healing in our lives, the healing in our bodies, the healing in our emotions, the healing in our marriage, the maturity and the growth that God, and I, I'm saying that to give God glory. But see, God has a purpose. Listen to me. God has a purpose in wilderness seasons. I'll say it again. God has a purpose in wilderness seasons. We don't like them. We don't want them. We don't desire them. We don't go after them. We don't thrive after them. But I'm telling you, we will never grow unless we go through wilderness seasons. Because it's in the wilderness season that our hearts become exposed. Did you catch that? It's in the wilderness season that our hearts become exposed. We get to know who we are. And we get to see what's deep inside of us. And I call it the ugly. The ugly begins to come up. And that's part of God's plan because God wants to heal us from the ugly. God wants to help us. He wants to make us better. His desire is to push us to and towards our destiny and our purpose because he knows what's best for us. If we keep enabling our children, they're never going to grow. They're never going to mature. And all the parents said, amen. Well, God is the same way. He allows us to go through these wilderness seasons. And we have been through the wilderness season. And this house has been through a wilderness season. But the awesome thing about seasons is this. It's a season. It has a beginning. And hallelujah, it has an end. <laughs> hallelujah. But I'll tell you this. The end will determine on our obedience. God wants it to end, but it, it will determine with our obedience and our submission to him and what he wants to do. Amen? Amen. Let me just read a couple portions of scripture and well, that was only the introduction. <laughs> I got about three and a half more hours. Are you here with me? We may have to delay the vote to two o'clock. No, we won't. I, I promise. I saw people running out the back door right now. I'm reading from the book of Exodus 13, 21 through 22. And I'm reading from the New King, New King's James Version. And if you have your Bibles or whatever technology you have, go ahead and pull that out and read along with me. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to go by day and night... He did not take away the pillar or cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Now turn over to Exodus chapter 40, the last chapter in the book of Exodus. We're going to read 36 through 38. And I'm still reading from the New King James Version. Oh, I love to hear of, I love the sound of the papers in the Bible. Beautiful. Throughout all their journeys... Whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken out, then they did not set out until the day when it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all of their journeys. I lift your hands all over this place this morning. Hallelujah. So, Father, we love you. We adore you. We thank you for the word that has come forth. We know that your word never returns void. I pray, O oh God, by the Holy Spirit that you would do your work in this place, in our lives. Speak to us today. Challenge us. And Holy Spirit, convict us in any area that needs convicting. If you agree with that, everyone say amen. 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 You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if you remember, but the last time I spoke here, July 22nd of 2018, I kind of remember that date, July 22nd, 2018, 
my last message to this house was the account in scripture of, the, of Moses leading the Israelites through the Red Sea. And where we left it off, at, it's so interesting how the Lord spoke to me, but it's, the way we left it off, if you remember, uh, as they were crossing, they were, cro- they were stuck. The Israelites were stuck. There was nowhere they could go. The Red Sea was before them, mountains all around them. The Egyptians were nearby behind them getting ready to kill them. What do you do when you're surrounded? You got to look up. You got to cry out. You got to ask God for help. What's the song that we sing Sur- about surrounded? Surrounded? It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Well, that's what the Israelites started singing. No, I wish they did. They started murmuring and complaining. But God in his faithfulness and God in his mercy for his children, he opened up the the Red Sea and they went across on dry land. And then what he did, what's even so amazing, not only did he go, did they go across on dry land and there were feet, I don't know how many feet of water on either side of them and the millions of people going across on dry land. What God did, he put the, the cloud behind the Israelites and in front of the Egyptians to slow the Egyptians down so that they would not see the Israelites. Is that not like our God? He knows how to protect us. He knows how to cover my backside. Hallelujah for that. He knows how to cover your backside. He knows how to protect you. He knows how to deliver you. He knows how to deliver me. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But that cloud wasn't there just for that time. It didn't show up and then go away. Now, aren't you glad that God just doesn't show up in one situation and then just goes away? Aren't you glad that the presence of God is with us day and night, day and night, that he never sleeps or slumbers, that he's always attentive. He's always attentive to you and to your prayers and to your needs, and he's compassionate over you. Aren't you glad about that today? Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad about that today. It was a supernatural presence of God. It wasn't just some uh, sort of symbolism that it was a cloud uh, by, by day and a pillar of fire by night. It was real. This was something that they could see. It was the manifestation of God's awesome presence, his protection, his glory, his honor, his desire to deliver his people out of bondage. Remember where the people were. They were in Egypt in bondage for four hundred years we go through bondage for three months and we're ready to throw in the towel 400 years could you imagine I can't even begin to imagine that but a loving kind merciful God said it's time to bring you out There are some things I want to show you. There are some things I need to show you. There are some things I want to expose to you. I want to provide for you. I want to love you. I want to show you how to worship me. I want to be your provider. I want to just take my kids and just love them. So he brought them out of bondage. He's a good God. He's always a good God. He's a good God in the valley. And he's a good God on the mountaintop. He's a good God when there's plenty of money in the account. And he's a good God when you're struggling for finances. He's a good God when there's sickness in your body. And he's a good God when you're fine and doing well. He is a good God. I believe in the scripture verse that talks about giving God thanks in all things. In all things. We are to give God thanks. And in this season that we have been in, I may have been down in Florida for eight months and you've been in, uh, in freezing New Jersey for eight months, but, but, but God has been good. God has been good. He's done some incredible. I love when the, when the band and the choir started singing the song and, uh, I don't remember the the line Maria, but, uh, he's always working. God never stops working. Even when we don't see him, even when we don't know, even when he's silent, even when we think he's abandoned us, even when we think he's gone away, he's still working. He's still producing. He's still showing. He's still doing his work behind the scenes. I'm telling you, he's a good God. He's a good God. You know, the, the, the disciples were in a boat with Jesus and Jesus fell asleep. Do you remember that? And a storm came up and they were crying out, oh, Jesus, we're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to drown. We're going to die. And Jesus kind of woke up and he rebuked the, the, the storm and it all kind of, they marveled at that. He just kind of turned to his disciples and said, you little faith. 
I was in the boat with you. He may have been silent, but he was there. He may have been silent because you know why? The disciples needed to see that their faith wasn't as strong as they thought it was. We'll just chew on that for a minute. So anyway, this pillar, this, this pillar of fire by night and this cloud by day, it was not symbolism. It was a miracle. It was during the day the pillar guided their journey and at night it gave them light. Could you imagine looking out of your tent and just seeing the presence of God through either a cloud or through a pillar of fire? How comforting would that be? How comforting would that be? It was comfort for the children of Israel. God gave them the pillar of cloud by day to lead them in the way. To, to, he wanted them to go and the pillar of fire by night to give them light. He used the pillar of fire and the cloud for 40 years. A trip that should have been 11 days. 40 years. I'd like to think that we're different. I'd like to say, Lord, I would have been different. I don't know, to be very honest with you, that we would have been any different. I don't know. Has there been some murmuring? I don't know, Lord. Has there been some, I'm not looking at anybody. I'm just looking over here. Has there been some gossiping? Has there been some stories? 40 years. 40 years. But even... In the delay, God never left them. He was faithful and his presence was there by the cloud and by the pillar of fire by night. God is not afraid of our mess. He doesn't abandon us just because we make a mess. I've made my fair share of messes. Ask my wife. She knows. She tries to clean them up. They're normally much bigger than she can handle. I'm telling you. But God does not abandon us because we make a mess. Here it is. Ready? If there's anything you get, is this. God is so patient. He's not in a rush. He's not in a rush to accomplish his purpose. He's not in a rush to have you get in line with him because he loves you. He adores you. And he knows that we're in this flesh. He understands that we're going to fall. He understands that we're going to make mistakes. He gets it. Doesn't like it, but he gets it. And so he's willing to wait and walk with you sometimes slowly, and maybe take a couple steps back and then take another step forward. He's willing to do that out of his love for you and out of his, out of his love for me. If you believe that, put your hands together and give him a clap offering this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is so good. We also know that the cloud represented and the pillar fire represented protection over the Israelites. We, we know that it represented faithfulness, God's faithfulness to never leave the Israelites. We know that God never leaves us nor forsakes us. That's not just for them. That's for you. Come on, point to your neighbor right in their eye and say, that's for you. That is for you. Now take that same bony finger and point it at you. That's for me. That is for me. See, God knew that they needed that constant reminder of his presence. He knew it. They're coming out of 400 years of bondage. They don't understand. They don't remember what it's like to be in communion with God. He needed to be there. See, he knows what we need and he's willing to give us not just what we need, but our God is a God of more than enough. Our God is a God of abundance. He's not running out. And he's not afraid to share with his kids. He's not afraid to share with his kids because he absolutely loves us. And here's the deal. When they were out in the wilderness, the, the, the pillar or the cloud would rest in the center of the camp where the tabernacle was. And the tents 
were set up all around. That to me spoke very clearly. God wants one position in our lives. Number one, center. Number one, that's what he wants. That's his desire. We don't add God to everything else that we do to our list. God wants to be number one. God first, then everything else that we have in our lives. That's his desire. Amen. But whenever that cloud or the pillar of fire began to move, what did that mean for the Israelites? I love the choir, by the way. You guys were just amazing this morning. Everyone in the choir. Praise God. Everyone was amazing. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. But whenever that cloud or the pillar of fire would begin to move, that was a sign to the leadership and to the people of Israel, it's time to go. It's time to pack it up and go. I hope I'm not, I don't have a southern draw. Being in Florida, maybe it's giving me a little southern draw. No, not really, sorry. But it was time to go. Because God said, whatever was needed to be accomplished has been accomplished. Now it's time to move on to the next place. Now it's time to move on to the place that I have for you. So whenever the pillar or the cloud began to move, pack it up, time to go. There was no question, because if you didn't, you'd die in the wilderness. Okay, you understand that? Because the cloud was also a protection from the heat of the sun in that place. He was protecting them. There was so much that the pillar and the cloud can represent. See, the, the children of Israel, that entire account and story, that's a shadow of the church today. Just chew on that for a minute. It's a shadow. It's a, it's a picture. It's an example of the church today. See, the same way God led the children of Israel through the wilderness to the promised land, they had to go through, somebody say through, not around. It wasn't around. It wasn't bypassing. It wasn't the easy way. They, they had to get through the hard way to get where? To the promised land. But God knew if there were things over here that weren't dealt with, their mindset, their bondage, 400 years of slavery, the orphan spirit, not understanding how to worship God, he can't give them the promised land unless this is dealt with. Because if he gave them the promised land, while they're a mess, what's going to happen in the promised land? Mess. They're going to destroy it. They're going to destroy themselves and destroy others in that process. And many of you already know where I'm going with this. And so the same way God led the children of Israel through the wilderness to the promised land is the same way that he guides the church from the cross to the world, through the world, to the promised land. And our promised land one day is heaven. I am a citizen of heaven. I live here on this earth and I function on this earth and I have a call and a purpose on this earth, but I'm not a citizen of this earth. My address might be whatever it is, but my ultimate address is 777 Heaven Highway. You see what I'm saying? So this story is a shadow or a foreshadowing or a picture of the church today. I've got a little illustration for you. It might seem a little corny, but just bear with me. Uh, Barb, could you come up here? I asked Barb to do something for me. Come on, give Barb a good hand. Maybe down here. Maybe down here, I guess. Let me just... I, she has no idea what she's doing. All I told her was, Barb, bring an umbrella. Okay. For those of you who are like spooky and stuff and don't like to open umbrellas in a house, get over it. You're in bondage. That's a myth. Didn't Jesus just tell you he told fear to shut up? There it is. Open the umbrella. Whoa. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. Okay. Let's say this is the presence of God. This is the pillar of fire by night. And this is the cloud. Okay, and here it is. That represents 
the presence of God to me or to the Israelites or to us, and I'm under it. While I'm under it, hi, Barb. Hi. While I'm under it, I'm protected. I'm loved. And even if the elements come down, it's not going to touch me. You see this authority? Because God is authority, and I'm submitting to his authority. I'm covered under his authority. I'm covered under his love. I've got a relationship with God. I'm honoring him. I'm loving him. I'm blessed. He's got, this is provision for me. This is everything that I need. So those days when the pillar or the pillar of fire by night or the cloud began to move. Now move, Barb. Okay. They were to move with, with the presence of God. Keep moving. Good. Go, go, go. Keep moving. Hallelujah. Go, go up this way. We're moving. We're moving. Hey, Paul Baker. We're moving. And while I'm doing this right through here, and while we're doing this, I'm being blessed because God is guiding me. He's direct. You hit me with the pillar. You, you just burned my hair. I got hairspray in my hair. Go this way. This way, right here. I'm protected. I'm submitting. I'm loving. He's providing. I'm worshiping. You're still hitting me. Thank you. See, God would never do that. God would never hurt me like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is good. Maybe we're struggling, but still I'm following God. He's showing me the way. He's leading me. He's guiding me. He's showing me. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. You're bringing comfort. Your presence is comfort. Okay, so that's good. I'm blessed. It's good. It's not always easy. I've moved a couple times in my life. I hate it hate it hate moving so imagine them every time the pillar of fire by night and the cloud moved they had to pack everything up and move oh man but it's worth it because it's god amen okay but what happens if the cloud begins to move go ahead lord i really don't want to go i'm really tired of this will you please stop i'm comfortable here now there's a snowstorm or a rainstorm now, that, keep, keep going. Why are you always doing this? I don't like change. Will you, I don't want to be obedient. I've, I've been obedient for 10 years. I've done so many good things. Could you please, where are you going? I, where do I go now? I, I have, where, I know God loves me, but if God, where, what's, what's going on here? What's, what, what's, what's happening? And so let me just say this. You can keep walking, Bob. Good. She's doing such a good job with that. <laughs> and then stop. If you can, stop right there, please. Right there. Thank you very much. Is it possible, as a church, that the cloud has moved and we didn't follow? Because we don't like change. Now, I heard that Barbara shared that revelation with me over three years ago, probably two, three years. And it's not left my heart for three years. I have pondered and I've chewed on that, read the scriptures regarding the pillar of fire and the cloud. Is it possible even in our personal lives that we get complacent or we, or we become disobedient? And listen, we all have. It's a little quiet in here, but I'm telling you, we all have. You've done it and I've done it. We can do it as a family. We can do it as a church. We can do it as a community. Not following where God wants us to go. See, if you want to be blessed, you got to figure out where God is going. We don't tell God, God, I like this over here and I want you to bless what I'm doing. God would just kind of wave at you. Okay, go ahead. Hi, God. If we want to be blessed, we want to go into the next season of our lives as a church, as a city, individuals, as a family. We've got to get in line with where God is taking us. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. If you don't do that, if we don't do that, then an 11-day journey becomes 40 years. And there's delay after delay. And that doesn't mean God doesn't love us. It doesn't mean God doesn't want to help us. It means that we are unwilling to take the steps that we need to take to go where God wants us to go. You know why? Because God knows what's best. 
And we praise him, hallelujah, Lord, we want your will. We want this, oh God, I'm here for you, Lord. And then he takes us into a weird place and we're like, I'm going there. That's the devil. And we begin to rebuke the devil. We did that when we moved to Florida. This is the devil. But our cloud was moving to Florida. There were some things he needed to show me there. There were some things he needed to break in my life there. Thanks, Barb. Thank you, Barbara. Let me just share three, three things with you. I hope that was helpful. Did that help you understand the whole pillar? Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Thank you. Uh, three little nuggets about the pillar and the cloud and just God for our lives. Number one, say, God has a plan for me. He's got a plan for us. He's got a plan for you, for your family. He's got a plan for this house. He's got a plan for the community. He's got a plan for Chestnut Assembly of God, destiny and purpose and walking into the place that he has for us in this city. How many prophetic words have we heard over the years about this house being overflowing with people and the work that God wants to do in this house and the miracles and all the things. And just because we're not always seeing it doesn't mean that God has forgotten it. He's waiting for us to get on board with where he's taking us. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. If God said it, he will do it. If God said it, he will do it point blank. That's it. There's no debate. There's no question. I'm not discussing that with anybody else. If God said it, God will do it, period. Amen? And if he said it, and if he has a plan for you and for this house, he will lead us. He's not just going to drop the plan on your, on your lap and take off and say, hey, I'll see you in 20 years. I got some other things to take care of. I'll be back to see how you did. He's not going to do that. He's going to guide us. He's going to direct us by his Holy Spirit. He's going to show us the way. Thank God that we don't have to figure it out by ourselves, that he's there to direct us and to show us and to even help us when we go off course. How many of you know we can go off course sometimes? Driving here, we got to Maryland, and I, that stupid GPS took me off course. I ended up in Maryland for 25 minutes. We were fighting in the car because she's telling me one way to go, GPS saying another way to go, and I know the way to go. Which actually ended up being the way she told me to go, so I'm just saying. Just saying. That's the only time I'll ever say that, I promise you. <laughs> Lord, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Trust the Lord, trust the Lord in all our ways and he shall direct our path as long as we continue to acknowledge him. He's not just going to throw the plan in our laps and say, go for it, go, go. He's there. We're acknowledging him, we're honoring him, we're blessing him, we're worshiping him. God, you're good, we're following you, we're doing all the things that you've called us to do. And then while we're in that mode of moving, God will never abandon us. He has not abandoned Chestnut Assembly of God. He's here, he's been here, he's been loving, uh, loving and wooing, and he's been working behind the scenes, even if we weren't able to perceive it. And sometimes by faith, you use the scripture verses just to remind yourself, God, you will never leave me nor forsake me. I stand on your word. I don't care what people tell me. My trust is not in man. My trust is in you, oh God. You will not leave me. You will not forsake me. You are with me. You stick with me closer than a brother. And I stand on that. No matter what the enemy might try to whisper in my ear. No matter if he's on my door knocking. Let me tell you something. If the devil's knocking on your door, don't answer the door. Just don't do it. Don't answer the door. He's got a plan. He wants to lead us. And he will never abandon us till the end. In Deuteronomy, we see, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God, he is the one that goes with you. He will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. Preach, pastor, preach. 
That's good. That's good. That's amazing. You can hold on to that. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. But in that, in that wilderness experience or the valley experience, there are some things that we've got to experience. Things that are going to help us grow. Things that are going to help us move forward. Change our mindsets. Change our habits. He will speak to us. There are things that he told me in his honor during this eight-month uh, wilderness experience that blew, it's like, poof, blew my mind. Amazing things that I got to experience and see that I will never be the same again. It's uh, incredible what the Lord has, and he's doing that here. See, but what they didn't understand and what we don't understand is that experience that looked like a setback. And so many of the Israelites were like, you know, at least in Egypt, we were eating, of all things, onions. Well, at least we were eating onions. I would have said like a Big Mac or something. At least we were eating Big Macs. But they said, at least we had a place to lay our head. At least we were working. Yeah, we were getting beat up and we were slaves, but at least we were working. And the wilderness sometimes looks like a setup or a setback. But what they didn't understand was that it was a setup by God to prepare them for the comeback. A setup. Come on, give the Lord a, a clap offering if you're going to do it. It was a setup. Looks like a setback, but it's a setup. Because 40 years later, although it was delayed, God brought them into the promised land. That was the comeback. Incredible comeback into the land of milk and honey and provision and homes and grapes the size of cantaloupes. And it was beautiful. The provision was incredible. Don't you love a, a good comeback? Oh, the Bible is a book of comebacks. Can't you see? Our lives are a comeback. Just recently, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, Tiger Woods. Was that not the, listen, he's had his own personal problems, but man, was that a comeback? I wanted to scream at the TV when I saw what he had done. I was so happy for him. What a comeback. Incredible. I don't know how many years it was, 8, 10, 12 years that it was that he had won that particular thing, but it was a major comeback. I was excited for him. Now, close to our hearts here was a couple years ago, the Philadelphia Eagles. What a comeback that was. Was that incredible? Was that not incredible? I love the underdog. See, I love the underdog, and I believe God loves the underdog. Because we know that God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Hallelujah. That's my life verse. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, one of the best comebacks that I love, and this is going to date me a little bit, is Daniel LaRusso in Karate Kid. Don't try it. Don't do it. But I anticipate when watching that first one, he goes like this. The wax on and the wax off. And then he, you know how it's going to end. He, he beats the fight. He wins the fight. And he gets the girl. But what a comeback. All three of them. The first one is this. The second one is that, that thing where they do this. Remember? Do, do, do you remember that? Forget it. <laughs> Trust me, it's a comeback. It's incredible. And my heart rejoices when I watch it. Still to this day, I'm like, yeah, Daniel. You know, I think about my own wife. What a comeback. What a comeback this is. And I could pick her and I could pick many of you that have been down. You've been beaten up. And people have overlooked you. She's been overlooked. People have talked about her. And I'm, I'm not saying this to get pity or whatever. It just is what it is. But every time she's had a, a setback, it was a promotion time for a comeback. And God has done a work in her. God. 
God gave me a vision of her. She was on the floor and the enemy had his foot on her neck. And this is what came out of her mouth. I am hard pressed on every side, but I'm not crushed. I may be perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I may be persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. Struck down, but I'm not destroyed. She is an overcomer. And she has had the comeback. I think about some of the stories in the Bible. Look at the prodigal son. That foolish young man who went out, took his father's inheritance and blew it on women and all the things, all the worldly, immoral type behavior and found himself eating from the pig pen but yet came to himself and said, at least the servants in my father's house are eating real food, sleeping on good beds and having a good time. The comeback from the pig pen back to his father's house. What a comeback. And if you read the scriptures, you see when he was coming back to his father's house, his father was on the porch anticipating the return, waiting for his boy to come back. And when he saw far off, he was like, oh, I think that's my boy. I, I've been waiting for him for two years. Oh, that looks like him, but he looks really skinny. I don't think he's, he's eating well, but he looks dirty. Oh, it's my boy. And hit that dad began to run, run towards his boy. And the scripture said that, that the father fell on him and kissed him and loved him and brought him back into the house. Threw a big party, put a ring on him, put a robe on him, honored him when he didn't deserve to be honored. What a comeback story. Incredible. Another comeback story is Peter. Big mouth Peter. Always talking and putting his big foot in his big mouth. But what a man of faith. And he denied Jesus three times. Even cursed. But yet, God had a plan for Peter. And there was a comeback. And Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? God, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you really love me? Jesus, you know that I love you. You know. Take care of the little ones. Peter, do you really, really love me? Jesus, you know how much I love you. Take care of the little ones. Do everything I ask you to do. What a comeback. What a comeback. We know Joseph was in the pit and the mess that he went through because of his brother's jealousies and his own, his own immaturity to Potiphar's house, to the palace, to being second in charge. That's the God that I serve. This book is a book of comebacks. But they all went through their wilderness season. <laughs> One of the biggest comebacks is Lazarus. Lazarus was dead and came back. <laughs> Think about that. So there's hope for those people that are dead in your, in your families. Yeah. Friends that are dead in their spirits inside, they're dead. Come on, speak life into them. Yeah. Speak honor into them. Speak positivity and love into them. And bring them to life. Don't condemn them. Speak life. Come forth and speak out their name. I've spoken that over my children when they've gone through seasons and I'm thinking they're dead. And I've gone, Genesis, come forth. Oh, what a comeback. Lazarus was alive. And then, of course, the greatest comeback in Scripture is Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, they thought that they killed him. They thought they had the upper hand. The devil was planning a banquet to celebrate because they knew, or they thought they knew, that they had messed up the plan of God. And Jesus hung on that cross for you, for me, 
And do you know that we, we were all there? We were all with him on that cross because he took your sin and my sins. By our sins, we were all there. We were all there with him. And he bled. And before he gave up the ghost, he cried out, it is finished. And the devil and everybody else thought he meant, I give up. It's over. But his work had been completed. Everything he promised to do, that we would never need another thing for the rest of our lives. Every sin that we would ever commit. All our bondage, all our sickness, everything that we would ever experience was gone. It is finished. It is finished. And you know that on the third day, he rose victorious as king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah to the lamb of God. Hallelujah. We we praise God for that comeback. Because the same spirit that rose him from the dead lives within you and me. Hallelujah. Uh, Tammy, if you can come up on the keys, please. But there's one more comeback. That's still in the making right now. There's a group of people that have been in the wilderness for eight months, for a year. And there's been struggle. And there's been pain. And there's been hurt. And we've been on the Red Sea. And we've seen God's miracles. And we've seen his provision. And we're getting ready to cross over. We're getting ready to go into the promised land. We're getting ready to see everything that God said about this house. There's a greatest comeback that's happening right now. And it's Chestnut Assembly of God. It's this house. It's this house. It's this house. We're getting ready to see the greatest move of God we have ever seen in this house. We're getting ready to see the greatest comeback this city has ever seen in the history of this city. Come on. We're getting ready to see the greatest comeback. The greatest comeback we've ever seen. Remain standing, please. It's not because of you. It's not because of me. It's because God said it. God said it. God said it. And he said to me, we are ready now to go to the promised land. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Truly, he is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. And he is light in the darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, oh God. Do it again. Come on, cry out with me. Do it again. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Do it again. Come on, if you will believe with me, will you lift your hands all over this house? Just lift your hands. Begin to thank God for where we've been. But oh God, praise him for where we are going. Come on, just out loud, begin to praise him. Thank him for what he's getting ready to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it again, Lord. We believe you, oh God. We believe you. We believe you, oh God. We believe you, oh God. We're moving with you, oh God. We're going where you want us to go. We'll do what you want us to do. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God.